Hello, welcome to my channel. I'm Nina and today I'm going to be talking all about Semester at Sea and how much it actually costs to go on this crazy adventure. It's gonna be a lot of information, so buckle up and yeah, let's do this. <laughs> So first of all, if you don't know, Semester at Sea is an amazing study abroad experience where you get to live on a giant ship with about 500 other students and take classes while traveling all around the world. If you want the definition from the website, Semester at Sea takes a global comparative approach to study abroad using a ship as its traveling campus and sailing to multiple ports around the world, which is basically what I said. More or less. I will be attending the fall 2018 Semester at Sea Voyage. This voyage begins on September 9th, 2018, and it starts in Hamburg, Germany. I'll be flying there to get on the ship, and then we will be traveling to, I think, 11 countries? Spain, Ghana, South Africa, Mauritius, India, Burma, also known as Myanmar, Vietnam, China, Japan, and then Hawaii. It ends on December 23rd in San Diego, California, which is where my school is. So I'm really excited about that. So the majority of my summer has been spent focused on prepping and buying stuff for the voyage and planning. So I've been watching a million videos on YouTube about SAS. I've been following other people's like vlogs, but I never found a video, like just a single video that had all the information I needed in one place and also no one really talks about the actual price of this crazy study abroad adventure so I wanted to lay out all the numbers for you including the cost of tuition and all the additional costs you have to think about because there's a ton of additional costs that you don't really think about when you decide to do something like this and so I wanted to make a video because I really could have used this when I was applying for SAS and this whole summer when I was prepping and buying and spending lots of money. Okay, so I have a ton of notes, so let's get started. First off, I began the application process pretty early for semester at sea, around January. I was on winter break, so that was about eight months before my voyage was set to begin. It's always good to get an early start on this kind of stuff because there is a ton of things you need to get done if you're seriously considering studying abroad with Semester at Sea specifically. It's different for every university and the study abroad requirements can vary a lot from school to school, but for my school it's a pretty long process. I'm going into my third year at the University of San Diego and for our school I think you need a 2.75 GPA in order to go on Semester at Sea. I know it varies depending on which study abroad you choose, but for, for Semester at Sea, I'm almost positive it's 2.75. Now for USD, we had to make an account on the study abroad portal. That was the first step. And then once you choose which study abroad you want to apply for, there's a huge checklist that you need to go through that you need to check off every single box in order to have your application go through. Before you go any further, you should make sure that the classes that are offered on the ship line up with the classes that you need to graduate or like in your major or all that stuff. That's something that I had to consider too because I was changing my major and all that stuff. So You can go on the Semester at Sea website and look at all the classes from like the current voyage or past voyage because they offer similar courses for most of the voyages. Also talk to your counselor, your academic counselor. I mean, you could talk to like a personal counselor if you want to, I don't know. <laughs> In addition to my USD study abroad application, I also needed to make an account on the Semester at Sea website because they have a separate application that you also need to fill out. So the first step for me was to apply through the Semester at Sea website. It didn't take very much time at all. It was actually pretty simple. There's the basic information you fill out about yourself. If I'm remembering this correctly, I think there's only one long essay there could be like a few little short ones, but there, I just remember writing one long one where we had to explain like kind of why we wanted to go on SAS and maybe like 
one or two countries that we're interested in seeing and like why we're interested in seeing going to that country. For me, I put, I was really excited to see like China and Japan because I took a bunch of classes on Asian studies. So I said that I was excited to see all the places that I had learned about in class. Then after you submit your application to Semester at Sea, you have to send them your official transcripts, which you can do electronically. And then you have to get approval from your own study abroad office for your university. For, for my school, I had to bring my unofficial transcripts into the International Center. Once you've done those two things, you have to print out the disciplinary clearance form, which SAS will email you after you apply, after they get um, approval from your school that you're allowed to go on semester at sea. So you print out the disciplinary clearance form, which is mainly just to weed out the bad seeds. <laughs> so you have to get that signed by your study abroad office or for USD, it's a place called the Office of Ethical Development and Restorative Practices. I have no idea why it's called that. So once it's signed, you scan it and then you upload it to your semester at sea like portal thing. So I got all of this done in about a month from like January to February. Now we're on to phase two, money. Now we're gonna get into the money part or the lack of money you have after you sign up for this. <laughs> Once you submit your SAS application and you're approved by your study abroad office and you turn in all those forms, the next step is to pay the $1,000 deposit to semester at sea to choose your housing option. This is where you choose your um, type of cabin that you're going to have on the ship. There's four options and they all vary in price depending on if they're inside or outside, which means with a window or without a window, or the number of roommates you have, which is um, a double or triple. So included in this price is the tuition, the program fees, and housing. So for an inside triple, which is the least expensive option, it's $25,074. For an inside double, it's gonna be $28,074. For an outside triple, it's going to be the same as an inside double, so $28,074. And then the most expensive option is the outside double, which is $31,074. Now there are many other additional costs and expenses that you're gonna to have to think about, but I'll get into them a little bit more later. Personally, I requested an outside double because I knew that I would kind of get claustrophobic and I would need kind of like a window in order to like you know, see outside. I was worried about getting seasick and stuff like that. So that's just me. If you want to save a little money, definitely choose the inside cabins. They're a little bit more cheaper, save you a little bit of money. For USD, we pay our tuition directly to our school. And then I th think they pay SAS. I think that's how it works. I'm not exactly sure. All I know is that when we pay tuition, we pay our school, and then we pay the remaining to SAS. But it could be different for your school. The tuition for USD is pretty similar to the tuition for SAS, which is kind of expensive. And I think that's why a lot of kids from USD decide to go on semester at sea, because it's basically the same price, but basically I mean without all the other expenses that start showing up after you're knee deep into the semester at sea application process. And that's exactly how I convinced my parents to let me go on this. It was similar in price, but you know, we didn't really th I didn't really think about all the other expenses, honestly. But what really made this voyage possible for me was that my scholarship for USD carries over to my study abroad. Like I could use my merit scholarship to pay the tuition for SAS, which made it a lot easier for my parents to say yes. <laughs> but if there is anything that I would do differently, it would have been to apply for scholarships through SAS because they have so many different scholarship opportunities that I just didn't think about because I thought they were mostly need-based and I don't usually qualify for that kind of um, scholarships. But so many people apply and I should have looked more into it, so that one's on me. <laughs> and now we're gonna talk about visas and passports and all of that fun stuff that drove me and my mom crazy for months. Yeah, so after you get assigned a cabin, step three is just to finish up all of the remaining paperwork and submit all of the documents you're going to need to take a trip around the world. <laughs> Honestly, this step is where it gets the most stressful, I would say, because now you have to think about 
visas, getting the right type of passport, registering for classes, and dealing with the fact that, wow, I'm going to be on a ship for four months. The visa process was actually the worst thing ever. <laughs> but honestly, I think my mom was more stressed out than I was. <laughs> so it was about April when me and my friend McKenna, who's also going on SAS, were in the campus coffee shop on the phone with the visa people trying to figure out how we're supposed to do this. Semester at Sea partners with this service called Trevisa and they help you get the visas you need for the voyage. So for this voyage, I would need three visas for Ghana, um, India, and China. So we signed up and then filled everything out on their website, and soon we realized we were about to get charged like $300 extra for their like concierge person to like do it for you. So we were calling and trying to like cancel it, and it was just a mess. So when I was home for spring break, me and my mom, thank God for Allison, went through and figured out all that I needed to do. It's actually a very complicated process and very specific. If you have any further questions about like visas and stuff, go ahead and leave some comments and I'll try to help you as best as I can because honestly this process was really difficult and I'd like to help you out if you need it. Or maybe it's just me and I'm just like, you know, dramatic. You know, maybe it's easy for other people. So after I got my new passport, we sent away this huge packet of applications for the visas. Let me tell you, the visas are one of the most expensive additional costs, I think, for SAS. My bill from Trevisa was $729.17. When I got that email, I think my heart broke a little bit. Not to mention my father had a heart attack. <laughs> so before I sent the visa, I mentioned that I got a new passport. I already had a valid passport but it was one of those 17-page um, ones. It was like a small one, and it had a couple of stamps in it, so I didn't, there wasn't gonna be enough space for everywhere we were going, so I needed to get the 84-page, which is a bummer, because that is also more money. That was another, I think, $100, so you have a tally yet? <laughs> if you have to renew your passport anyways, because it's expired, I highly recommend getting the bigger passport, just in case you want to do more traveling after or before SAS, or, you know, after you're done with SAS, you're probably gonna want to go everywhere. All right, so now we have our acceptance. We paid the deposit, we chose our cabin, we got our passport, got our visas. Now it's time to book our flight to Germany, where we embark. So me and my friend McKenna booked our flights together because we didn't want to go alone, which I highly recommend finding a flight buddy if there's someone in your area going on SAS or one of your friends from school are going on SAS because it's, you know, it's just nice to have a buddy. So that was another expense that you have to pay fully for. That's gonna cost about $1,000, depending on which airline you choose. A thousand is about the average. This is when I started to get worried about the cost racking up but there's no turning back once you book your flight. So now I wanna talk about classes and field programs. So in the beginning of May, we registered for our classes on the ship. Usually people take only four classes on SAS because it's just a lot to travel and do school at the same time apparently. <laughs> but I signed up for five classes because our school um, approves us to sign up for five classes. Your girl needs to graduate on time. <laughs> then in June, the portal opened up for us to register for the semester at sea field programs. Field programs are excursions that are planned by SAS and basically you just pay to go on the program and they have planned everything for you. You don't have to worry about planning anything like transportation, like flights, like anything, like food. They usually pay for food on the field programs. But these field programs are expensive. I was not expecting them to be that expensive for some reason. I didn't really do that much research before I started doing this so you're welcome <laughs> the day trips are around 100 to 200 dollars about and the overnight programs can be anywhere from like 300 to 1500 dollars i think the most expensive one is like three thousand dollars granted these programs are already planned for you like flights and everything you don't have to worry about logistics you feel a little bit safer and sas is liable for you i signed up for about six field programs in advance I signed up for a few day trips and then two overnight programs. I chose to do the Great Wall of China and the Taj Mahal overnight programs because I honestly don't know if I could plan those by myself. Yeah, so I mean, it's up to you if you would rather um, 
do field programs or if you would rather just do independent travel, I am planning on doing a lot of independent travel too. So since this video is full disclosure on all things money, I'm going to tell you the total amount I spent on field programs was around $2,700, which is a lot of money, I know. <laughs> I was able to pay for most of my field programs with uh, money I saved from a whole semester working at the cafe station at a restaurant on campus. Worth it. So I'm gonna call this part pop-up expenses. I started to realize there were a lot of them. <laughs> now on our timeline, we are well into summer by this point, a couple months, weeks away from SAS, and I'm running around trying to get all the final things done. In order to finish the SAS medical form, you need to get all of the necessary and required vaccinations. Also medications. The yellow fever vaccine is required and malaria medication is required. Your normal doctor is probably not going to have both of these things on hand. So you'll probably have to go to a travel health clinic. I went to a place called Passport Health and I got the yellow fever shot and it costed $300. I also got the typhoid vaccination, which is recommended but not required, but I don't really want to take any chances. <laughs> that one was $165. The malaria medication costs anywhere from $90 to $120, depending on which kind you get. Usually they give you doxycycline, which is, I think might be cheaper, but I'm allergic to that, so I got prescribed the other option, which was called Malarone, which I think might be more expensive, but you know. There's no going back now. They also recommend getting like seasick medication and um, medication for like traveler sickness, another added expense. So for vaccinations, necessary, expensive. You also need to buy a bunch of over-the-counter medicine. Another pop-up expense I had was all the stuff you need to travel around the world for four months. <laughs> what a concept. <laughs> I have done like not really any traveling ever. So I had like absolutely not nothing, none of that travel stuff. If you've ever traveled and you already have all that stuff already, then you're already ahead of me. <laughs> I swear I had stuff delivered from Amazon every single day. Okay, I did buy some things that I don't like 100% need, but still. I'm also going to be doing a pack with me slash haul kind of video. So I'll get into all the stuff I bought when I do that one. I got two roller duffel bags so that I could uh, put them underneath my bed in my cabin. That's what they, they recommend. And I got a big backpack for like overnight trips in country. A converter plug because the ship has European outlets. External hard drive because apparently the ship vibrations can crash your computer somehow. Better to be safe than sorry. A money belt. Luggage locks. Emergency sewing kit. Okay, I probably didn't need that one, but you know. There's so many things that I never even thought of that I need. And let's not forget we're actually going to school on this ship. <laughs> textbooks. I needed to buy over $300 worth of textbooks. I think spending money on textbooks is the most painful thing, literally ever. Because they're some of the most expensive things that bring you no joy. <laughs> but you have to buy them because school. So obviously I've done a ton of research on SAS because you know, like, I have one of those obsessive kind of personalities. I've gathered that you need to have about $3,000 to $5,000 in your bank account at the start of the voyage. You also need a good amount of cash. I'm also gonna convert some of my money into the local currencies of some of the countries, Not maybe not all of them. You also need to get a credit card if you don't have one already, which I didn't. This is mostly for emergencies, kind of like in-country like emergencies, but it's also for on-ship purchases. So you have a card that's your Semester at Sea kind of ID card that you use that's connected to your credit card account. All transactions on the ship are charged to that credit card. This includes laundry services, snacks, food from the pool, grill, field programs that you sign up for on the ship. So there's another few hundred dollars. You also need to think about your international phone plan situation. There's no cell service on the ship and Wi-Fi is extremely limited. So 
So you either need to get an international plan, which are really expensive, or something I found out is that you can take like an old phone and you can get it unlocked. So I have an unlocked old iPhone that I'm going to bring as well as my regular phone. You can get it unlocked from your like your carrier. So like if you have AT&T, you just put in a request to unlock your phone so that when you go in country, you can buy like a data card or a SIM card like prepaid data SIM card. This option is a lot cheaper than an international phone plan, but still an added expense. I think this is the last pop-up expense that I encountered, but last week we got an email saying that we will be charged an $895 fuel surcharge, which means fuel prices have increased or something like that and they need more money. Do you hear that? It's the sound of my bank account crying. <laughs> Okay, so I think we're nearing the end of this video. If you're still watching, thanks for sticking it out. I know it's a lot of information. I really hope I touched on everything that I wanted to. After eight months of preparation and applications and draining your bank account, the grand total of this whole thing, yes, I'm going to tell you essentially how much it costs to do this whole entire thing. Tuition, all the added expenses, housing, all of this stuff, everything. And it came out to, drum roll please, $41,403.38. That is a very large sum of money. You know, I think it's gonna be worth it. All right, so thanks for watching this video. Um, I'll be doing some more videos about SAS maybe. I'm gonna do a pack with me video and then I think I'm gonna try to vlog and upload a bunch of videos following me on this crazy adventure. I know this is a very expensive study abroad option and I'm very, very thankful for my parents' financial support and for my school, for my scholarship and I'm very, very blessed to be able to do something like this because it's gonna be a once in a lifetime. Thing. And if you're thinking about going on SAS, if you're going on SAS, if you're going on the SAS I'm going on, I can't wait. It's gonna be crazy because at this point I haven't even gone on it yet. So yeah, I'm excited for me, I'm excited for everything. So yeah, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye!